Okay, so what if we do a chemostat with a reaction that's a little bit more complicated? Let's say that we have parallel reactions. So here we have a substrate, and instead of the substrate just being turned into biomass X, we also have the substrate being turned into a product P. And again, since these are biological reactions, the stoichiometric coefficients are not really uh, readily available. Like instead, we have to use these yield coefficients, which are like empirically determined after you do the results in the lab. And these yield coefficients, uh, they're basically the same as stoichiometric coefficients, but here they're like, again, they're empirical. They probably have a lot of decimals, they're not clean numbers, that kind of stuff. So for these, this parallel reactions, I'll consider the cell maintenance being considered, like it, uh, it won't be zero, but I will be setting the inlet x to be zero again, and also the product to be zero in the inlet flow, and I'll be using the Monod equation for this, and I'll show you how we can model this system in a chemostat. Uh, one of the first things that we can do is we can take, we can actually just do an x balance just to show you that unit is d. So, the chemostat, the inlet only has substrate, outlet has substrate, biomass, and product. When you do the balance, you'll get this, the flowing out, and the reaction part. Okay and you can just actually cancel x out so you'll get you the, the the net specific growth rate will just be f over v equals d and u net is ug minus kd so really d plus kd is the growth specific rate Okay, so that's not, that's fine. Um, there are some things that we can do next. We can do a S balance and also a P balance. Let's do an S balance. So, just do the balance and you'll get something like this. But the thing is, with the reaction, now we have two reactions the reaction of S getting consumed to turn into X and S getting consumed to turn into P. So let's start off with a portion that's converted to X and the product. So product we denote with a QP instead. So basically we have a growth different kind of growth rate for product P, so we denote it as Q. There's different kinds, but in general, QP equals, we can use mixed growth rate. Sometimes it can just be a constant, but usually what we say is it's actually this constant times the growth rate plus another constant, which means that even when the growth rate is like low, it still, ha it still has beta, it still has something else it can grow from. So it's kind of like it's proportional to to the gross growth rate, but it can still be something else at different points in time. But we can sub that in afterwards, we don't have to sub it in right away. And we can simplify the expression. Multiply all sides by the yield of x, the yield of s into x. And we can just factor out the x. I mean, uh, QP itself is also a function of x, so it's going to be implicit. When we're dealing with these parallel reactions, I don't think we'll be able to get explicit equations so easily. So we'll have to just settle for this for now. Okay, so what was UG? UG is D plus KD, so let's substitute that in.
Okay. And and we can just divide to get x. Again, it's not really x explicitly because inherently this has x in it as well, so. So we can kind of see some parts are similar. Still have the yield coefficient, still have the substrate consumption. But we also have this term. There we go. So that's an equation we can get for x. We can do a p-balance to get the concentration of p, but actually let's see what we have. That's x. Um, we can actually get s concentration from the Monod equation. Let's do that. So Monod equation is this. Um, and this is growth specific growth rate is net plus the cell maintenance coefficient. Or equals D plus KD. And, and we want to get it in terms of S. This actually ends up kind of being messy, but, but we can distribute this around. Okay, and then we just get the S terms. Okay, and then and then we just bring the terms to the other side. Something does look kind of weird with this. I I definitely missed a negative sign somewhere. Let's see. That's weird. Ah, uh, I see. That that whole thing is negative. So what we can do is bring the negative into that. Now we get what we. See, when you do this a lot, you start to recognize when it's right and wrong. There we go. So that's S. How does S look? S is explicit. This is really good. Good. And... And we could put this into this x equation, but we don't have to for now. Um, uh, yeah, you can do that to eliminate the s. It'll still be in terms of um, x from the qp, though. So yeah, I mean, I, I just leave it like this for now. This is okay. Uh, and then we can do the p-balance. No product in the inlet. And then the flow rate times P plus this QP and XV equals zero. That's from the reaction from it being made, so it's positive. What we can do is FP equals QP XV, then DP equals QPX. And then we just isolate for P. Okay, so that's that, uh, and you can even uh, put in what QP is. If you use a mixed growth, it's basically this kind of stuff you get. So you can even just substitute that in if you want, and then you growth specific growth rate is D plus KD at this case, so you can even go a step further.
Okay, so that's looking good. It's in terms of x. So it's not really independent. Everything else is a constant, but it's still in terms of x, but 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 so far that's that's actually pretty good what we have. If you're given a question where you have to solve it numerically, you'd be giving a whole bunch of constants, like uh, you have d, k, d, all of the constants from above, alpha, beta. It ends up being a mess, but all you have to do is just make sure these constants are very empirical, so just make sure you have the right units, depending on what units you're given for alpha and beta. You need to probably draw out the units and cancel them out, make sure it all works out, and you get product P. P in terms of X, and X is in terms of X. But yeah, you end up getting a lot of messy expressions, but this is probably the simplest case of, um, of a, a parallel reaction with a substrate S. W uh, the substrate S will go into X and go into P. Uh, you can have reactions much more complicated than this though. Um, but yeah, simple case. And then uh, we have the growth, sorry, the, the cell maintenance coefficient as well. So it's not like uh, the most simple case. We, we did do a little bit of math and you'll see that since the equations are not explicit, there's only so much we can do basically. <laughs> But I think that'd be good enough for modeling this kind of equation for an exam. And then, yeah, it doesn't even have to be necessarily with a Monad equation. You can make it more complicated. And yeah, x naught doesn't have to be zero either, but but it's easier to see that that specific growth rate is d. It makes it so much easier, but you don't have to do this. And again, you can do something stupid like, I shouldn't say it's stupid, but you can do something like recycle the unit back, but but then it's like you probably want to use Comsol or some computer software that can solve the pro the kind of mathematics with iterations and trial and error. You you don't want to do like something messier by hand. Like this is as much as you would get, I would think. A question like this would demonstrate your knowledge and in most of the stuff like you know the stoichiometry, you have to be careful with like the reaction terms over here. And you'll notice with reaction terms, they're all multiples of each other. For example, um, you'll see that for the S, you, you have to divide by the stoichiometric coefficients, but in this case it's really the yield coefficients. And then the other ones, when they're being made, you don't have to divide it. You're really just dividing it by one because, you know, it's a, a different reaction. But it's always a multiple of each other. If that makes sense, you'll see what I mean. But yeah, that's how you do a question like this. I hope it helps.